So the narrow window and why. It's important to first understand why we need viscoelastic testing. You see in the immediate post-bypass period, the surgeon is assessing his work, as well as the patient's endogenous contribution to hemostasis. As we all know, some patients come in already challenged by the effects of their medications. This coupled with the hemodilution and prolonged bypass times may exacerbate their already tenuous hemostatic status. So the perfusion team can play an integral part in the decision-making process by providing concise and direct communication to the surgeon about the results. This is critical in that the longer it takes for a decision to administer product results, the longer it takes to acquire those products and ultimately uh, increases the overall, overall, the overall OR time. And we all know that time is money. Do we have time for a test that won't provide timely results or requires extensive training and memorization to interpret the results? and then provide the surgeon with the information so they can make the decision? Well, the Quantra Plus system delivers everything we need. For our team at Mount Sinai, we use the Quantra Plus. It's a next generation ultrasonic, ultrasound-based viscoelastic testing analyzer for point of care use. It's a closed cartridge system, fully automated, and delivers actionable results within 15 minutes. It's very easy to use and the interpretation is unbelievable because of the beautiful screens and dials they provide us. The information derived from the Quantra is the clot time, the heparinized clot time, which allows us to see the clot time without the effect of heparin, clot time ratio or, or calculation between the ratio, between the clot time and the clot time heparinase. And this tells us about the uh, residual heparin on board. It also tells us the clot stiffness or the strength of the clot, while providing us with both the contribution of platelets and the contribution of fibrinogen. Ease of use and methodology. There are three points or intervals for collection of samples. As there is no additional collection time than what we already experienced with ABG and ACT, we collect that sample at the beginning with the baseline and ABG from the anesthesia. And then on our normal routine rewarming sample, as well as at the end of um, by, at the end of post-protamine, uh, we receive another sample from anesthesia. As you can see in the video, the Quantra is a closed system. There isn't any pipetting or dripping of blood into the testing analyzer. There is more exposure with the ACT than there is with the Quantra. Once you press start, it's plug and play. So let's look at a case. The following are the baseline results from a re-op AVR, MVR enclosure of an ASD. As we all know, these cases have a higher propensity for blood usage. Um, the patient's baseline ACT was 146 seconds. The HNH was 11 and 35. Baseline platelet count was 396. INR was 1.1 and uh, the patient with on this baseline, it showed the clot initiation to be in the normal range, which appeared adequate for hemostasis. Clot stiffness showed robust status with considerable amount of uh, hemostatic reserve. And the communication we provided the surgeon was that normal clot time with hypercoagulable state. Oh, by the way, we got these results in 13 minutes and nine seconds. Second sample we did was the rewarm on pump time. Um, as expected, the CT showed us no clot detected due to the patient being fully heparinized. And this correlated with an ACT of six greater than 600. Uh, we also took off three liters of fluid for this patient based on the amount of um, cardioplegia we delivered. So I, I don't think hemodilution really factored in much um, with the other, other parameters that we had, the CTH was prolonged over the baseline. That was expected due to hemodilution. Uh, heparina heparinization was neutralized, but not reversed. I think it's important, the clinical judgment of how prolonged the CTH is, because it's 191 now, but from 139, you can explain that it was from either hemodilution um, or other factors involved, but it is coming back down to normal. So if we had a... Uh, if we had a value of 255, that might indicate the need for us to assess for FFP. But the, like I said, the result of 199 on bypass 
you would need to use further judgment of whether or not you were going to recommend FFP later. The on-pump sample allows us to plan for product uh, to call and get it ready. Okay, this is this is a great screen. I think uh, people will like to use this screen a lot in their analysis because this is a you know gives us trends. And uh, on this screen, it shows the data from the two samples we've taken so far, the baseline and the rewarm sample. From this screen, we have decided to make a simple calculation of the percent drop in the clot strength, the platelet contribution, and the fibrinogen contribution to that strength. This patient started above the normal range, but had a drop of 25% from baseline in their clot strength, a 24% drop in their platelet contribution, and a 10% drop from their fibrinogen contribution. This we found was a very valuable way to communicate with our surgeon prior to termination of bypass. As you see, the patient is still technically within the normal range, but as we all know, all patients' results are specific to that patient, and we'll talk more about that in the next slide. Uh, the post-protamine sample. So the patient's ACT was 122, Hematocrit jumped up to 26. Um, bypass time was 173 minutes. The patient, I mean, sorry, the surgeon observed oozing. So when we look at the values, the clot time or the CTH and the CTR yellow indicating they are outside the reference range. But if you remember, we had the CTH of 191 on the rewarm sample. And so we are now trending back towards the patient's baseline. And the CTR is below 1.4, indicating no residual heparin. The clot stiffness uh, shows there's considerable decrease in clot strength. There continues to be a loss in both fibrinogen and platelet contribution, but a notable drop in FCS from the prior sample. The communication we pro provided, the communication we provided to the surgeon was there was no indication of residual heparin, but there was an overall 30% drop in the clot strength the platelet contribution to that dropped by 30% and the fibrinogen contribution by 40%. So the decision by the surgeon was one platelet and one cryo. The surgeon's observation of the patient's bleeding combined with the contra uh, indication allowed us to move in the direction as stated. Next screen. Prior to leaving the OR, uh, it was decided that we would perform an additional Quantra assessment to ensure that we had the desired response to the administered products. The clot time of the CTH and the CT continued to trend back towards baseline without FFP. Clot stiffness or the overall clot strength starting to trend back to baseline. The platelet contribution has leveled off with one dose of platelets. And after one dose of cryo, the fibrinogen contribution has started to trend back toward baseline from the 40% loss. The bleeding has stopped and there's confidence going into the ICU that the targeted therapy has optimized this patient's hemostatic balance. In closing, viscoelastic testing has been discussed in the literature to be valuable information when compared to the classic PTINR. This due to the viscoelastic testing's ability to give you real-time measurements of whole blood versus a PTINR that may be days old or would take too long to result in the middle of the case or post-procedure when, when we need to make those decisions. So I opened my presentation with two quotes and will we'll again repeat those quotes and would like you to reflect on those when thinking about your current approach to hemostasis management if viscoelastic testing is not a tool in your toolbox. Never be complacent about the current steps you Never be complacent about the current steps. Don't agree and follow the status quo. Be determined that you are making an indelible impact with great change. And the amount of respect that an idea deserves is revealed by the verifiable facts that it contains. This slide shows the images of the results from three commercially available analyzers. From the first two, the results can be complicated to interpret if you don't receive specific training and ongoing, specific and ongoing training. Our team feels that the Quantra is easy to interpret and visually intuitive screen and names and the parameters are easily associated with the targeted products. Hemosonics, again, the, the great thing is that they've provided unparalleled clinical support to our surgeons, the anesthesiology team and the perfusionists to better manage the hemostasis of our patients. 
And in closing, how will you decide which VET platform you will utilize? I say VET is easy as one, two, three. It's easy to run, easy to interpret, easy to educate, communicate, select, and administer. Thank you.